Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, (laughs) Rhonda. Hello, David, and welcome to all of our listeners to episode 289. This is a special episode. Can you explain why, David? Yeah, we've got a special treat for you today because uh, something I've been looking forward to for quite some time, um, it features Sterling Maury, who who you heard on a recent podcast, but he was actually one of my first students going way back into the 1970s. He came over from England and we spent a month together doing co-therapy. He was just a medical student trying to learn about cognitive therapy. And we did a month together that way in 1979, and then he came back the next summer, uh, and we did another month together in 1980. And boy, was he phenomenal, humble and brilliant and gentle, and those were some of the best months of my life. And now, for the first time in more than 40 years, we're going to be reunited to do some uh, co-therapy again. We actually published a chapter about our work called the apprenticeship model of cognitive therapy training. And uh, I I viewed it at the time and still viewed it as a fabulous way to to train students. You have them sit in with you and you do co-therapy and you learn from from each other and the student can get up to speed really, really fast sometimes. And we'll be working with Anita, a woman from uh, Africa. So he'll be in London, she'll be home in Africa, and I'll, I'll be here in California, uh, and, and we'll be doing co-therapy. She has been struggling all of her life, I believe, with pretty severe social anxiety and some depression, and so I really hope you, you love the, 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 the podcast today. Today, we'll do part one of, it was just one two-hour session. Uh, that's how I almost always work these days, and extended sessions. I try to complete the work in a single session. And she wanted to help with uh, social anxiety. So that's our focus uh, today. And we'll go over the initial testing, T equals testing and E equals empathy. And then next week, we'll bring you the A equals assessment of resistance, M equals methods, F equals follow up, G equals good, (laughs) H equals Hello. <laughs> Help. <laughs> so I, I hope you, I hope, I hope you love it. Any other comment you have to? Well, I'd love to read it. it. I'd love to read an endorsement that's kind of related because it's cool. about anxiety order disorders. Um, somebody wrote us, you are doing a great service, especially for people like me in developing countries. I'm from Sri Lanka. I read your book, Feeling Good. And I find the methods you suggest to change the way we think very helpful. Doctors in our part of the world rely heavily on drugs for mental disorders rather than on cognitive behavioral therapy. I suffer from anxiety disorder, and I've applied for your free course on how to overcome anxiety. Thank you again for the great service you are doing for humanity. Sincerely, Sanaya. Well, thank you, Sanaya. And that's really neat hearing from someone in Sri Lanka. Is that I pronounce that right? No, Sri Lanka. Oh, Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for that. And that fits right in because today we're going to be going to, uh, to Ghana for, to do some, some personal work. We're going to Nairobi, Kenya. The same place, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shows you how off I am in my elderly age. At least I know I'm still here in, in uh, <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a really beautiful this is a really beautiful example of of both you and Sterling offering um Anita incredible empathy and with a lot of warmth and understanding and you both do self-disclosure which also helped her um 
you know, connect with you and feel comfortable in who she is. Yeah, social anxiety is maybe my favorite thing of all to treat because I've have five, I've had at least five different kinds of social anxiety myself, plus tons of other forms of anxiety in my life. And so I really like to to share the secrets of how to how to blow it out of the water. So we'll see if we can do that today with uh, with Anita. Okay. You guys say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll kind of, uh, it's, it means a lot to me to be uh, working with you again, Sterling. Uh, when when we worked together, it was just so fantastic. And then we wrote that article for a book, The Apprenticeship Model of Cognitive Therapy Training, where we described how effective when we did co-therapy was both clinically, which was very exciting, but also in terms of learning, you know, you can kind of get up to speed in a session or two rather than taking years to learn, learn a new approach. And, uh, and, and then I, I've used that ever, ever since, uh, you, you know, in teaching. Uh, I, I've, I've done co-therapy sessions with, with Rhonda. Uh, we had just a remarkable one with someone from our group, uh, and uh, it, it was just fantastic. I, I've done many with Jill Levitt, who I teach with, and it's really been something that's enriched my life so tremendously. And so it's just, uh, I, I just, I just love you, Sterling, and I'm, I'm so uh, excited to jump back 40 years and <laughs> recreate the magic that uh, was so exciting and rewarding at, at the time. We'll go through the TEAM model, and I'll, I'll give us a little start with the T of testing. And that's kind of the TEAM is kind of the sequence of, of a session testing and then empathy and then assessment of the resistance and then M equals methods. Um, and we'll do the testing again after the session. We'll, uh, we'll ask you, Anita, to fill out the end of session brief mood survey as well as the empathy and helpfulness uh, uh, scales on the evaluation of therapy session. And so um, the, your score on the depression David, test. David, I, I yep. love that you're jumping right into the testing, but I thought I would set the tone by reading one brief endorsement that. Oh, one yeah. Of the cool. Our team therapist, Dan Prine, sent us, and he wrote, just a note to reinforce the impact of your podcasts. They're saving people's lives, literally. Oh, that's, thank you, Dan. That's so kind of you to say that. Uh, really appreciate it. And, and we do, in fact, get uh, emails pretty much daily from people who have been so helped by this. And uh, if any of you are struggling and... Uh, you know, need more help than just the podcast. My website is just filled with re free resources for for people. Um, there, there's a free depression class, a free anxiety class. There's like over 200 of the Feeling Good podcasts now teaching all about Team CBT. And then also uh, you can sign up to be a beta tester, uh, feelinggood.com forward slash app. And uh, and that's also free to 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 be a beta tester. And the uh, the feeling good app is already uh, looks like outperforming human therapists. And so that that's the way to get it. It's not intended as therapy. It's just a self help tool. But it's 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 more potent than antidepressants or human therapists, uh, based on our most recent fairly large beta test. And so there's just a, an awful lot that you can do on, on, on your own as well to overcome depression, anxiety, and so forth. And so now I'll go ahead and, and jump in. And on the brief mood survey, Anita, your your score is 13. And that, that's pr pretty high. It goes from zero to, to 20. So this would be heading from the, the moderate range into the severe range. And I think the individual item responses are worth mentioning too. The, uh, you know, the sad and down in the dumps was on a zero to four, it was three, a lot. 
and the uh, feeling discouraged or hopeless was uh, two on the zero to four. That was uh, a, a moderately. And then the l loss of self-esteem or feelings of uh, inferiority or worthlessness was extreme. That was uh, four, scored four. And then a loss of motivation was, uh, was a lot. And the, the loss of, of uh, pleasure or satisfaction in life was, was one. And so that's really enough depression uh, to, uh, to, 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 to it's, it's just pretty heavy to take pretty much all the joy uh, out of life. And we hope we can help you with that. The suicidal urges was zero, but you skipped one item. Let me ask you about it now. There were three items and you did two. Do you have urges or plans to end your life? No. No, oh, okay, no, I'll don't. just add the zero on that one. And then the uh, anxiety was, was 14. That was in the same range as the depression, which was 13. That's, that's at the beginning of the severe level and you feel you know, extremely anxious and extremely nervous and moderately worried and moderately tense. And then uh, on the anger, which I suspected would be very high, was actually the lowest. And one reason to measure things is because therapists' hunches and perceptions of how patients feel are, in a study I did on the inpatient unit are, are, are very low. I, I don't know if I've ever told you about that study, Sterling, but we had inpatient experts, interviewing experts, interview newly admitted, 170 newly admitted patients for two, two, two to three hours, giving them the SKIDS interview. And then at the end, I asked them to turn their backs to each other and had the patients fill out these exact scales and the evaluation of therapy session and had the therapist fill it out, guessing the patient's answers mm -hmm. since they had just spent two hours or three hours talking about depression and anxiety. Uh, so then I could see how accurate are these therapists and everything was uh, under 10% accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, em empathy was the highest rated was 9%, which is, very poor and depression was only three percent anger was zero percent and um and, and so on and so forth so the uh, uh that the 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 the, te the testing gives us correct in information whereas our our hunches are fre frequently uh or nearly always uh, pretty far off off track and then the happiness on the zero to 20 was was only six so that that's I felt sad, Anita, to see that too. That you're you're not feeling, uh, you know, happy or joyful or or hopeful or worthwhile or motivated or, you know, there's just very little enjoyment uh, of life. And then your relationship satisfaction with your husband was 24 out of 30. 30 is the perfect score, and that's uh, you know moderately satisfied, but showing perhaps some some room for improvement there. Uh, so that's that's about it, and we'll check on that again at the end of the the session. So we'll dive into the uh, empathy phase now, and I turn it over to you, Sterling. Mm -hmm. You you were my student, but you were my teacher, yeah. and uh, I, I learned so much from you. So let's. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I just I echo what David was saying. That feeling, feeling sad for you, feeling so sad, and that the uh you know the 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 enjoyment the the things that gives life its uh its zest sounds like that's not around for you and i'd, I'd just just be interested to know first of all um so we can sort of get a picture of of how much this is you has this been around for a long time anita or, or a fairly recent feeling of low and anxious <laughs> I think it's just become a part of my life. Um, you know, I, I yeah, it's just become a part of my life. It, um, I think I'm sad more often than I'm happy. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Very hard to live with sometimes. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And and when you say sometimes okay, sometimes not, what's what makes it sometimes bearable and sometimes unbearable? Um, I think when uh, a lot of my my moods are based on how my relationships are going and so many times when they're not going well it goes down um i think there's a lot of um like the the last few days have been hard because of the the really really bad review that i got so like uh thinking uh really uh, negative thoughts about myself and putting myself down a lot so that has um wow brought my my mood really low yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, and and on the testing i note that although your relationship with your husband is is really you know quite good the area of resolving conflict is not so good so i'm just sort of thinking is there something there for you that's really important about you know what people think of you that when they they think badly of you get cross with you it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't like being thought um, badly of or um, conflict um, or feeling like there's conflict uh, in in my life. Um, yeah. I don't think I handle it well. Yeah, and that's uncomfortable. And and what are the negative thoughts that come up with that? Um, that I'm not good enough. Um, I think some are questions: What's wrong with me? Will this ever go right? Um, Slow down a little bit. Uh, I'm just writing these down. Um, sorry, I'm not good enough. Um, I think the per pervasive question would be, uh, what's wrong with me? Because mm. um, it's nearly always my fault, or I make it my fault. Um, mm. yeah. uh, and then I put a lot of blame on myself. Yourself. So if, I'm, if I've understood the process there, it sounds like there's some conflict or something that makes you feel that you're not up to standard and people are, are, are being critical or, or judging you for that. And then there's the I'm not good enough. And then almost like a sort of a, a ruminative process, a questioning of, you know, what's wrong with me? Why aren't I good enough? And I'm thinking about, again, some of your answers on the daily uh, mood log of the negative thoughts, um, predicting that I'll never be comfortable in group situations. So are those sort of questions going round and round in your mind those analysis what's wrong with me what's wrong what's gone wrong a lot yes yeah yeah, yeah. very much so yeah so i'm just sort of wondering is there a sort of often we find a sort of a little bit of a sequence that there's an event that where you feel wanting or judged or you're not doing well enough activating that thought i'm not good enough and then that process of questioning coming in is that happens for some people. I don't know if it happens for you. Um, sometimes it can just happen, but more often than not, it happens because of an event. Yeah, yeah. So the like event something, something will have happened. Yeah, the event would so trigger the, the. It triggers yeah. it, and then do you think about that event and think about? sort of what's wrong with you for a lot of time after that or does it go away quite quickly for a lot of time after that okay yeah 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 so if, if i've understood right there what we've got is things might be going not too bad then there's something that triggers that thought that you're not good enough because in some way you're being judged or failing and then it's really hard to let go of that yeah yeah and if we were to track your mood using David's mood log over the course of that sort of process from the triggering event to, you know, a few hours after, where does, what would we notice? Uh, probably that the, 
anxiety, the sadness, and the row of worthlessness would be very high. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I really feel for you. And I suppose I, I would um, would sh share a bit. I mean, thinking of looking at some of those things that you've put down, um, I must say I can relate to uh, as a therapist. So I don't know if it would be worth sharing, David um, uh, and Anita, some of those negative thoughts that you've put down on the Daily Mood log. So we could understand them a bit better. Yes, let's go ahead and do that, and I'll I'll briefly read both of the daily mood logs, if 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 you like. Mm. Before we do that, let let me ask a question here. So far, uh, how would you grade Sterling on on empathy? This, this sounds probably kind of ridiculous, but it's something I found really helpful. Would you be giving him an A, a B, a C, a D? Uh, and there's three things to think about, uh, Anita. You can rate me as as, as well, uh, or, or rate us as a team. But one is, uh, is Sterling getting your thoughts, you know, the data correctly? Is he acknowledging your feelings? Is he getting some feeling empathy? And and do you uh, feel accepted uh, or 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 cared about? Definitely, I think an A. Yeah, and, a. and what? Um, yeah, that's yeah. what I figured. Tell us what Sterling's doing that's, that's giving an A, because we want this to be a good teaching thing, as well. And empathy might not cure people of a whole lot, but it's absolutely so important to to enable other powerful tools to to to, to work. What, what what's so beautiful about what Sterling is doing? In those few minutes, I felt that he absolutely got me. And what and did he do that made you feel that way? I think he just kept checking in that he, he was getting it right. Right. And um, another thing is I, I call what Sterling is doing the nothing technique. He was giving you nothing. He wasn't trying to cheer you up. He wasn't making interpretations. He wasn't trying to help you. He was just trying to be with you and to grasp what, what goes on inside of you. And although that looks very simple when you see it, it's actually very difficult for most therapists to do because we're trying to, you know, say something important or impress the patient or jump in and save and save the patient. But it's, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I, I think you, you were a half a grade point off though with Sterling. I mean, my okay. own, my, well, I, I, I gave it an A plus. <laughs> you're too, you're too kind. You're yeah. too kind. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, let me just read the, uh, the daily mood logs you sent in, if I can do that, um, Anita, and then I'll give it back to yeah. you, uh, Sterling. The earliest one that we had was, uh, uh, kind of a social anxiety one, and uh, you you were uh, you know going to the peer support group for the first time, and you were feeling unhappy ninety percent, uh, all the anxiety feelings a hundred, and inferior and defective, uh, or let's see, inadequate, inferior and inadequate a hundred, self conscious a hundred, frustrated ninety and irritated and upset 100 and your thoughts is uh, you uh, I'll, I'll have nothing to say I'll say and you rated that 100 they're all better therapists than me you rated that 100 i should not be here was 100 i'll never feel comfortable in group situations 100 i have nothing to offer 100 uh, and so th those were uh, you know d devastating thoughts to have when, when going to a group and it's just a perfect uh, specific example of what you had mentioned in, in your dialogue with Sterling and then the one that you sent this morning a more recent one and th this was very sad to 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 read about that uh, uh, the upsetting event was getting what you called a terrible review from my supervisor after 11 months of work and um uh, before I read read this, can you just tell us the kind of work that you've been doing for the last eleven months? 
Um, I work with um, uh, World Food Programme Somalia. So I'll go a lot into the field and go into Somalia um, and I work with the staff. Um, and I felt I had put a lot of work in um, and I felt that by the end of that, I felt it was totally trashed and I did nothing. Um, it, it was one of the hardest hours of my life, I think. <laughs> listening to all she had to say um, about my work, nearly everything after what she said, but I don't know how professional that was. I don't know if you helped them. I don't know if you did anything like after things that I had done, like there would be sessions with individual clients. She'll say, I don't know how professional they were. Um, <laughs> it was so hard to hear. Well, that, that sounds horribly painful. Yeah. She said, I don't know if you helped them. And then the, the work you were doing was uh, counseling people in Somalia. Yeah, some part of it was counseling. Yeah, some part of it was counseling. Some part of it was um, um, there was like other stuff to do with the organization um, that was more um, not counseling, um, I guess, managerial in terms of sorting stuff out, but it was not particularly counseling. But the part where she questioned my uh my skill was the counseling part yeah were you using the brief mood uh, scale uh in, with your patients before and end no. of sessions or no okay. Okay. i didn't so, it was very it's very different no i didn't go no yes so the, the it, it's painful to, to get criticism and, and the thing i'm sure is close to your heart that your counseling skills is something that that you care a great deal about and, and when you got this terrible interview with her for an hour and got all this criticism you felt sad depressed down and a happy 100 percent you know anxious and worried 100 ashamed 90 inferior worthless inadequate incompetent 100 um, uh, rejected 80 uh, embarrassed foolish humiliated and self-conscious 100 hopeless and despairing 90, frustrated and defeated 100, and uh, mad, annoyed, and upset 100. And then you had six negative thoughts. Uh, again, you believed all of them 100%. She should have told me about her dissatisfaction earlier. I wasted a year and did not achieve anything. I worked so hard for nothing. There's no point in doing this uh, thankless work. I should not have been given this job. And this past year and all I sacrificed have, has been a waste. And I can see how devastated you felt and how devastating these, these thoughts are. I, I can't imagine something more painful and more intense. And, and your feelings indicate that your degree of suffering is really the mo most a human being can have. This is similar to the, you know, the the session with with Marilyn that you heard the first podcast when she was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, and uh, and and she, her her ratings were similar to this, but they were all one hundred. Most of yours are, are one hundred. Um, so I hope we can, uh, you know, bring you some 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 relief from that because it could be a really life changing ex experience. Right now, I'll back on out and hand, hand it back to you, uh, Sterling. Yeah, thank you, thank you, David. Um, devastating, I th I think, as David says, and um, I I've got the other daily mood log in front of me, but I haven't printed off the the one that David was just reading out. So I just wanted to check on the anger levels that that were associated with that. Or yes, the like, um, oh. the mad, um, annoyed, and upset. That's the anger dimension. Yeah. Was a hundred the most anger a human being can right. have, and yeah. the frustration was a hundred, and the. Yeah. Yeah, so no. you're frustrated and, and angry with the supervisor, presumably because of that first thought that, you know, I've got to 11 months down the line, this is the first time I get this, so that, that no one's, she should have told me this earlier. Um, and yeah, I understand that, yeah. Wow, so, um, and 
I suppose I was I was going to share with you just some of my thoughts on the first set of automatic thoughts, which are in some sense you know, painful, but not nearly as painful as this second set in relation to this event. But just to just to say that prior to coming online and doing this podcast, I had similar thoughts about am I going to be able to you know, um, um, am I going to be able to offer anything to David, who's produced this wonderful Teams um, uh, Team CBT model, which I don't know very much about? Um, and uh, will I make a fool of myself in coming on without being an expert in it? Um, so I think I just want to share with you that as a therapist, as a counsellor, um, for me, those feelings that I'm a bit of a fraud are not uh, uncommon. Um, and I don't think they're uncommon in therapists that I quite often ask people this uh, in some of our workshops. And um, when we look at the automatic thoughts of therapist beliefs, uh, uh, we don't, I, I don't have sort of data in terms of percentage, but an awful lot of therapists even if they're very experienced, will admit to having those thoughts. Mm, I'm a bit of a fraud. Uh, well, if I can I pitch in on, on, on that, we've actually measured that in some of our workshops mm -hmm. and about well over 90% of therapists have that. And then the other one that you have here is getting shot down by your, your supervisor. I can remember a session that I had early in my career uh, with uh, a, a patient who wasn't paying the bill in the clinic. I was a postdoctoral resident, so it didn't affect me. But uh, I, 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 there, there was some tension about if he was going to pay his bill. And, and so I went, reviewed the session with, with Dr. Beck, and he said that I had handled it, you know, really incorrectly. And... Uh, and I remember going home, uh, telling myself with thoughts sim similar to, to your own. There wasn't the anger dimension that you had, but all the rest was there. I, and telling myself and really believing it 100%, I, I'm a worthless human being. I have nothing to offer as a therapist. And I had the thought, they're, they're probably going to take away my medical license. I'll be banned from practicing in the state of Pennsylvania and stuff like that. And I can remember how devastated I felt and how valid those thoughts felt, mm. perhaps somewhat similar to what you were feeling when you talked to your supervisor. And then I, I, I thought, well, I'll, I should probably shut up and I'll, I'll make this short, but I, I, I said I should, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll go jogging I, because my, my thoughts seem so valid. And it was like I had seen the truth about myself for the first time. And, and I thought, well, I'll go for a long jog and that'll help me and my brain endorphins will, will get to firing up. And I ran for six miles and the further I, out with steep hills and stuff, and the further I ran, the more worthless I felt. And then I thought, why don't you write these thoughts down on a piece of paper and see if there's any distortions in them? And then I said, oh no, that's for my patients. I don't need to do that. My thoughts are valid. And then I said, well, David, you're whining, just like your patients. Why don't you write them down? And so I wrote those thoughts down on a piece of paper I forced myself to. And then I said, oh, there are some distortions here, all or nothing thinking, discounting the positive, fortune telling, uh, magnification, self-blame, you know, all, all of this stuff. And I thought, is there another way I could think about it? And then I thought, well, maybe I could tell myself I'm just a beginner. I'm just starting to learn how to do this cognitive therapy. And maybe I have the right to make mistakes and to, to learn. And, uh, and maybe I can even tell the patient when I see him that I had made a mistake and got criticized and felt ashamed and talk it over with them. And all of a sudden, my heart just leapt for joy and my negative feelings disappeared. That's what sold me on cognitive therapy, to tell you the truth, Anita. Mm. And then I, I, I had an appointment with the patient the next day. 
And I said, listen, before we get started, I want you to know, I think I really screwed up last session and, you know, pushing you on, on the bill. And I, I found out that I handled it all wrong. And I want, you know, I felt extremely sad and ashamed and, and thought maybe, maybe you were feeling hurt and, and angry and maybe we could talk it over. And he was so grateful and opened up. We had the best session ever. And I just got the highest ratings I'd ever had and went on and worked together really, really well. But this whole process of uh, turning our lemons into lemonade and, and learning to bounce back from these dark holes that we all fall in, uh, that, that's kind of what I've, I've devoted my life to. And I hope we can... Uh, do do the same for you t today, uh, Anita. Uh, back back to back to you, Sterling. Yeah. So I just I just be interested, Anita, in your response to that personal disclosure from myself and and David. <laughs> it's it's like a, a relief in a way to hear that you have the same kind of thoughts and um, other therapists question. Um, and have the same like um sometimes doubt in mm. their ability and in what in what they can do yeah 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 it's amazing isn't it and and as david says when we're in the grip it's all, it's almost like the sort of the the there's a flip the 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 light switch goes off or something or i can't think of a good metaphor but there's a flip and then suddenly all those things those negative things about ourselves seem the real us and everything else as david was saying is uh um seems to be a lie doesn't it so you know the yeah. real is this me who is despicable who's pathetic who's you know not able to uh do the things that i'm supposed to do etc cetera, etc cetera. and and then we get that hundred rating and you know if we're lucky the hundred rating doesn't last very long and we find ways to get out of it but if we're unlucky we can like like you've done is get a bit stuck in it yeah 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 get stuck and then add to it and you know it just spirals from yeah there. you say add, how, how do you find yourself adding to it i think it's the the um uh, is it magnification and everything you know yeah. i'm a bad this i'm a bad wife i'm a bad mom i'm a bad yeah. like everything then yeah. becomes and I'll think yeah. of every little mistake around the same vein. Yeah. And then sort of it just becomes this huge spreads yeah. out, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. So yes. One one tiny thing might go wrong, or maybe one big thing might go wrong, but then suddenly that spreads out to everything. It's not just yeah. that <laughs> maybe I've i I've, I've not satisfied my supervisor because you know we've got to start looking at there are several things that could be happening here. One is you know your experience and level of expertise but another is the info you know whether your supervisor has what information they have how they know about your performance and the other is their judgment about it you know which uh, and then the the other one is how they how they handle that judgment that uh, if they're giving you negative feedback is it done in a way that helps you to learn or is it done in a way that just rubbishes you which sadly some people I think we find, you know, get off a bit. They get get uh, actually quite enjoy putting others down without giving you practical solutions on how things can can change. But that's I think for later on in the process. But um, yeah, so I, uh, yeah, I, I really feel, and I think that you know, David and I would share, and I'm sure Rhonda as well, that we have those times where something goes wrong and then suddenly that that extension i like that's like i don't know if it's a some sort of horrible network of suddenly goes out it's not just this is wrong with me and that's wrong with me, and another thing and another thing and another thing and that's really really horrible and then we end up you know sometimes end up just lying there in front of the television or going to bed or you know doing 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 things then that actually make it worse which is something that i'd be quite interested to hear from you is um sometimes the things that we do when we think these bad things about ourselves and feel very low um sometimes the things we do 
feel at the time like they might alleviate the pain, but actually end up making it worse. And do you find yourself doing any particular things to try and make it better that backfire? Um, I don't know if it backfire, but I cry a lot <laughs> yeah. in that day. Yeah. Um, um, and then I think I, whoever is hearing the story, I'll beat myself up a lot. I'll yeah. say all these negative things, and probably like 10,000 times worse than they're written here. But yeah. I'll just say all these negative things about me. Um, to yourself or to other people? Sometimes it will be to myself sometimes it's if I'm sharing someone probably my probably my most probably my husband yeah um sharing sharing with them and then I'll beat myself up a lot yeah and beat yourself so some of this is internal self-criticism some of it is a bit like sort of a bit like moaning in a way which yeah. which yes. can have good good and bad effects um yeah I, I often think we don't look at moaning enough as a social psychology feature because it can have good effects we have a good moan and then the person we moan to listens and we feel heard and we feel validated but sometimes we can do that and it doesn't actually make things better and I'm just sort of wondering with your husband when you have a good moan to him about these things and beat yourself up does that help you feel better not always. Sometimes it does. Sometimes this time it yeah. did. Um, it did. Yeah. It did. I, th I think I felt hurt. Um, yeah. I, and maybe that's all I needed that day. Um, so this time it did. So it goes, it can go both ways. It can go both ways. Yeah. And um, and I suppose one of the questions that as therapists we might need to, to ask together is, um, is it necessary to share it in that self-deprecatory in that highly self-critical way to get the validation or are there ways that we can say it that are more respectful to ourselves but still sharing the pain does, does that make sense yes it did i'm still looking for that way i'm still looking for that way i love the way you said it i'm looking for a way that is more that that could be more respectful to me yeah um because i wouldn't want to hear my client my child my anyone speak about themselves like that and yet i do i speak about do myself in, not in interesting that. so, so yes. yes yeah yeah let me just um stop the process for a moment here and ask uh, you anita how are you feeling at, at this point like right, right now um I think a lot of my, like on the brief mood survey, a lot of the anxiety I felt was actually about coming into this and doing this. Um, um, so that has gone down because it was to do with this and just starting the process and putting myself out there in front of the four of you who I think so highly of, the three of you who I think so highly of. <laughs> So, um, um, and then, you know, wondering what's Rhonda going to think when she's seeing me again on Wednesday. Um, <laughs> so, so um, that was what a lot of the 100 on the anxiety was about. So mm. that has gone down because it's such a safe place. <laughs> I feel it's such a safe place. And can um, I add that on, yeah. on one of your daily mood logs? What's Rhonda going to think of me? Yes. <laughs> I'll put that on the, the coming to group one. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so we'll call that number <laughs> negative thought number six. But what's Rhonda gonna <laughs> think of me, and how strongly did you believe that one? A um, hundred. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, uh. Yeah. And can I just sort of um, just sort of say as a little maybe footnote or something to to hold in mind is you've labeled that as a sort of fortune telling error as a, as a, a prediction um and it's yeah. worth bearing in mind the so you've done a behavioral experiment haven't you of sharing those things with us and yeah. uh the experiment has revealed that 
uh, it wasn't as bad as you expected it to be. <laughs> and it's yeah. maybe worth bearing in mind that the next time thoughts like that come up, um, is there a way that you can hold on to the result of this experiment? Because what we find is that for all of us, we uh, we tend to just, you know, put in the background those bits of information that disqualify our predictions. But don't we hold on to the stuff that all the times that actually you felt it wouldn't go well and it didn't go well. So it's it's worth yeah. just holding on to the results of this little experiment and whether your thoughts, negative thoughts, were borne out or not. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what's what's so Sterling saying, Anita? Can you summarize it? Um, that many times we hold on to, for me, what I've heard is many times we hold on to what's negative about us, whether it's true or not. And um, my thoughts coming in here were very ang anxiety provoking. And I've just shown that they, the untruth in them, mm. in that they, they didn't come to pass. Because even these few, what, 45 minutes of this is way different to what I expected. Mm. But we don't know it's different because you don't know how we're thinking about you. <clears throat> we might be very judgmental of you and hiding our, our, our thoughts. But maybe I don't need to know what you're thinking about me. Why, why would that be? <laughs> because it doesn't really matter because what I think about myself is more important. So what are you thinking about yourself right now, Anita? I love what you're saying. That it's okay to be nervous and that um, even if I feel it, I can possibly even share it. And it's, I, I think that the thing I read most in your books is the monster has no teeth. It's not just not as scary as it as it was at the beginning. Yeah. So the judgments don't count as much anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm wondering if I could just do a little brief summary of what we've been over so far and then see if we'd be willing to move ahead. Uh, so if, uh, yeah, uh, go into the uh, assessment of resistance, which I think will be very interesting for you or whether we need more time to let, let you vent. But, um, the um, you 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 started out with Sterling just saying that feeling sad and depressed and down has really been a part of your life for a long time, and you're probably sad more often than happy, um, and uh, and and that when you're unhappy, it's kind of hard to live with with those feelings some sometimes, and so you've been really uh, uh, struggled with an almost unbelievable amount of pain during your life, although it does tend to come and go and you have your moments of relief and your moments that get more horrible. And um, Sterling asked what, what makes it more bearable or more unbearable. And you said it has a lot to do with relationships. And, uh, and the last few days were, were really hard for you due to the negative rating you got from your supervisor. And and that you you uh, and you agree that you know this this area of conflicts with other people is something that's kind of threatening to you and upsetting to, to you and a source of not only depression but anxiety and feelings of of an inadequacy. And Sterling asked you about the negative thoughts that you have uh, at those times, and and they they tend to be pretty much the same thing over and over again. Um, I, I'm not good enough, um, number one. Number two, uh, wh what's wrong with me? And number three, it, it's, it's my fault. Um, and, uh, and then Sterling was pointing out the pattern is something happens like a criticism, for example, that makes you feel like you're not good enough and then you ruminate about it. 
who say I'll never be comfortable in groups, and uh, and then pretty soon it just I'm I'm a bad mom, and one negative thought leads to another, and this this mushrooming occurs. And I can remember, again after that session with Doctor Beck, one of my thoughts was that I'm a worthless human being. I mean that that was the kind of the most extreme one, and I can remember how absolutely certain I was that that was a true thought. It, it just seemed ab- absolutely you know, like a fact of of the universe. And uh, and that the sequence for you often starts out with feeling feeling judged and uh, uh and 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 that once you get into these negative funks, negative anxiety, depression, it, it, it's hard to let go of the thoughts. They seem to feed on themselves and become more and more p- powerful. And uh uh, and and the, the prominent things you feel are sad, anxious, and 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 worthless. Um, and then you told us a little about your work in, in in the Somalia project, which involved some management and some counseling. And uh, uh, and it, and and then I reviewed your daily mood logs, and Sterling commented that these experiences for you can be devastating and you feel frustration and anger with your supervisor. And, uh, and then Sterling shared his, his, his social anxiety thoughts before the podcast. I shared, you know, that experience I had with Dr. Beck and, uh, and then uh, uh, let me just see here. And then when you're in pain, you you cry a lot. You you beat up on yourself. Sometimes you share with your husbands, and sometimes you keep it all internal. And when you share it with others, uh, you know some sometimes it helps and you feel validated, and and then sometimes it doesn't seem to help at all. Uh, and uh, and then you said that you a lot of the anxiety has, has gone down be, because you were pretty sure that. Rhonda would be mad at you, or we would be judging you, or some, some, something like that. And it was kind of a, a nice surprise uh, that it doesn't seem to be like that. And then Sterling said that was a kind of an experiment you did with your fortune telling, predicting that uh, Rhonda would be very negative. And then it turned out that 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 she was was not. Uh, and then you pointed out too, which I really liked, that uh, it's not so much what other people think about you, but what you think about yourself, because the judgments or praise of another person can never have an effect on you. Only only your own your own thoughts. Does that seem re- reasonably accurate so far? Yeah, it's it's actually it's very accurate. It's very, and, it is. It's a good capture. And I'm, I just want to thank you for for, for jumping on with us uh, because th- this is such a fantastic e- example from a teaching point of view. And at the same time, I, I just, uh, you know, I feel very close to you and very sad f- for you. You're kind of not the way I expected either. And uh, it's just really uh, e- easy to, to to be with you. You have a lot of warmth and vulnerability and openness that that makes me feel quite quite close to you. And um, and if you'd want, you could ask Sterling how he's feeling too, and you can ask Rhonda. You don't have to, but you can. <laughs> I think I'll start with Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put Rhonda on the spot. Yeah. Um, Rhonda, what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, my thoughts are, you know, Anita, in our Wednesday group, um, there aren't a lot of times I remember when you speak up and share yourself. And I'm feeling really grateful now that you're you're sharing yourself with with me and David and Sterling. And feeling really um, kind of excited to get to know you and hopeful and, you know, feeling kind of like a little falling in love with you and and can't wait for the next step to see what's going to happen. I'm, you know, feeling sad that you've experienced what you've gone through with your supervisor and the pain about joining this group that you mentioned, the peer consultation group. 
but really excited and hopeful that, um, you know, looking forward to the results of what's going to happen with, with more of the work with David and Sterling. And I'm also feeling kind of like I've, I've probably let you down in the Wednesday group by not calling on you enough. And I promise you I'll change that. No. <laughs> okay, I look forward to that. I look forward to that. Good. I'm learning to speak up from my Christensen's group because I'm doing the 12 week, uh, the 12 week uh, program. Uh, yeah, and he has pushed me to speak up. So I'm learning to do that. So it would be a nice challenge for me. <laughs> By the way, little commercial message. This is commercial free podcasting, but uh, uh, I'll give a commercial message for Mike Christensen's 12 week introductory group. If any of you listening are therapists and you'd like to get into learning team therapy, there's a lot of beautiful introductory uh, things available. But uh, one is the Mike Christensen from Canada does the 12 week introductory team classes and you can do a little personal work in there and learn the basics of team. And he he's just a fantastic human being and a wonderful therapist, wonderful teacher. So I, if, if any of you are trying to get little start in this area that's that's a good first step how, how about how about sterling how does he feel about you you yeah, know these british I, have a way of sounding very nice and polite but internally <laughs> he could be kind of raging and inside you don't, you don't know what i'm thinking inside so yeah i mean i think it's um uh yeah no i i like david um i'm not sure what I expected you to be like, but I don't think you're quite like how I expected you to be like. I think the, <laughs> the, the warmth that David describes, I think that um, your humor, your uh, and your openness, and a sort of a really lovely vulnerability. I think vulnerability can be, uh, you know, a, a good thing in in the sense of of you being. Uh, brave enough to be open about this and this like david and Rhonda, really makes me want to you know feel for you really feel for you and give you a hug over the over yeah. the waves yeah yeah thank and, you yeah and when we come on to the methods i'm i'm not a team cbt therapist so i'm i'm jumping all over the place but already we've got more experiments that you're doing uh with talking up more uh, which might be something that uh, that you can do in the group and so on. But we'll, I imagine, talk about that a bit more later on. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. <laughs>